Hi folks, I'm Tom Jackson. Welcome back to The Great Divide, a YouTube vlog about the disunited states of America. The influence of so-called conservative media has grown like a weed over the past 30 years. How did it happen and why? To answer that question, we travel back to the Reagan era. In 1987, the head of the FCC for the Reagan administration, then kings of deregulation, scrapped the Fairness Doctrine. The Fairness Doctrine required news broadcasters to give some of their airtime to discussions about controversial issues of public interest, including contrasting views regarding those issues. Conservatives from the media and business and industry lobbied hard to get Reagan to scrap this doctrine. Many in the news media business felt that a guideline like the Fairness Doctrine was an unconstitutional governmental infringement on their First Amendment rights. But another way of looking at it is that they wanted to corporatize and commodify the news, which most media outlets had previously viewed as a sort of business-public service hybrid. History has shown that supporters of scrapping the Fairness Doctrine didn't want an open and honest debate within their media broadcasts. They wanted to be able to frame things in a very specific way and present completely biased, one-sided angles on various topics and politicians. They got their way. In very short order, Rush Limbaugh emerged as the first far-right, completely biased, and often unhinged radio personality who quickly merged into television as well. Multi-millionaire Rupert Murdoch took notice, as did a guy named Roger Ailes. And soon, those two would start what is still the most damaging media outlet on the planet, a far-right television station cleverly disguised as a news channel, Fox News. More recently, as part of the extremely shrill reaction to the Obama presidency, a flood of far-right talk radio shows have spread like a disgusting virus. And then, of course, there's the world of podcasts, blogs, vlogs, and YouTube channels, all of which are riddled with somewhat less recognized names. Websites like Breitbart, have taken the cue from Fox News and hold themselves out to be a news resource when they are very clearly nothing more than a propaganda website for the extreme far-right, neo-Nazis, racists, etc. It all has been wrapped up together in an incredibly disingenuously named category of conservative media. There's nothing conservative about most of it, of course. Most of their infotainment products are far-right ideas that have moved people who refer to themselves as conservative way further to the right, closer to what used to be fringe groups like neo-Nazis, the Klan, preppers, and so on. Calling this type of media conservative is on a par with calling far-right activist judges conservative, while calling any judge who interprets the law in any other way an activist judge. Central to the success of these so-called conservative media outlets are the ideas of telling a certain sector of the population what they want to hear and telling them in a way that they want to hear it. And repetition is also key. Keep repeating the same lines over and over, stay on message, and never admit you were wrong. Although conservative media has traditionally been viewed as being comprised of different production companies, tuning in to several of them on the same day shows their concerted effort to not only stay on point within their own company, but to each hammer on the same points every day, using many of the same words and phrases. We are now 30 years into the age of mass media with no more fairness doctrine. It has clearly been good for business, but has it been good for we the people? Well, if you've listened to any of the other blog posts for The Great Divide, you know where I stand on that. I believe that this tectonic shift to the far right in some of our country's media is the cornerstone of the extreme divisions we see today within our populace. Not that many of the issues weren't there before. Racism, xenophobia, misogyny, Islamophobia, denial of scientific conclusions, and political animosities are nothing new. But they've been exacerbated by the one-sidedness and narrow-mindedness of the far right media. And many of these issues, which were once looked at as moral issues, have been politicized. And conservative media has been instrumental in making that happen. As I mentioned before, non-conservative mainstream commercial media is not without blame. Leaving out or distorting factual parts of stories that networks don't want to talk about out of fear of upsetting their advertisers, 
such as fostering a false debate over the issue of climate change using pro and con interviewees, neither of whom was an actual climatologist, and doing so for years after the scientific community had overwhelmingly agreed that anthropogenic climate change is real. That was a huge disservice to the American public, as well as to all life on the planet. All because he didn't want to lose any advertising revenues. Thanks for that, MSM. The bottom line here is that people who consume non-conservative commercial media are often given facts, but sometimes they are left unknowingly in the dark on certain things. Helping to keep people ignorant about certain things is not good, but it is not the same thing as what conservative media has been up to for the past 30 years. Conservative media does leave out inconvenient parts of stories too, but they're also notorious about making things up, embellishing on the right's various fears and frustrations with liberal and progressive ideas like democracy, presenting only the far-right perspective, repeating over and over that liberal media is biased and fake, and they teach their avid, faithful consumers how to deflect, project, and disrespect. Even after 30 years of this profit-maximizing agenda, few dare call it brainwashing. A quick side note here, regulation has been considered a dirty word since even before the Reagan era. Titans of industry have always hated regulations. Today, far too many people in this country can't seem to remember why many regulations were ever enacted, or they never learned why to begin with. An overwhelming majority of regulations didn't just appear because liberals love big government and love to regulate everything. Many were enacted for very good reasons, often related to protecting we the people. But a reminder about why most regulations are enacted is a story for another time. While the Fairness Doctrine policy wasn't officially removed from the Federal Register until 2011, its death in 1987 did spark a number of attempts at reviving it, particularly during the first decade of the 2000s. Predictably, opposition to bringing it back is drawn along partisan lines. Among the myriad issues that have been politicized, unfortunately, we have to include a doctrine that attempted to ward off total bias in the media, the Fairness Doctrine. Some Democrats want to bring it back. All Republicans don't. In 2009, a bill to block reinstatement of the doctrine passed in the Senate, but not in the House. According to that bastion of liberalism, the Associated Press, quote, conservative radio talk show hosts who feared that Democrats would try to revive the policy to ensure liberal opinions got equal time were behind the drafting of the bill. Shocking. For now, I encourage you to support non-commercial, independent, progressive media. Thanks to those who listen. For The Great Divide, I'm Tom Jackson.